I have to apologize real fast. I've been good about reviewing viewer selected games for the last three videos, but I saw Karma Flow on my Facebook and my eyes lit up like it was Christmas. A rock opera video game starring some of my favorite singers. Just real fast, this right here is my iTunes library. So you have my word, I'll get back to taking viewer requests after this one. If I have any. So getting into this, Karma Flow is a game that appeals to me in almost every way. It's such a shame it began disappointing me right from the start. So when I started diving into the game, I noticed a striking similarity to another game I've played, Journey. I don't like Journey. I saw it as a boring game where I held forward, jumping to clear a ledge, and the rest was more or less playing itself out. Karma Flow started feeling that way, but on the plus side, there were a few things that made it different. The central mechanic is stealing souls from whatever has a soul and using it to solve puzzles. Unfortunately, the puzzles tend to be really simple things like grab a soul from the left so you can make a bridge on the right. Or worse than that, just find X amount of things to put a soul in and open a door. I fell asleep playing this game during one of the earlier puzzles in the first world. I'm not kidding. I was playing the part where I gotta open a doorway to advance and confront the conductor in World 1 and drifted away. This is not a good thing, obviously. There was nothing to challenge the player in World 1. I get that you make everything easy in the first level to ease the player into the game, but I think the difficulty could have been ramped up from none at all. Things get a little better in World 2. Puzzles take more than one iota of thought to process, and there's even a bit with invisible platforms to jump on. Now, that concept is fine, but the problem arises when you have floaty jumps in your game. Floaty jumps and platforming don't mix. I can't think of anyone who prefers floaty jumps in their games. If they tell you they do, they're probably selling cocaine to children, and you should contact your local authorities. It was especially problematic in the climax of World 2 when I'm trying to dodge the big golem's gaze thing. Too often, I slid off a platform into the eyes of the hitbox. When it came time to choose the creature's fate, I decided it was going to live forever in agony doing his job of protecting the swamp rather than let it die in peace. Because f*** him, that's why. So here I was playing this game hoping it ended soon when I entered Act 2 World 3. I was all set to stop playing and just drop a negative review on the game, but then I jumped off the opening ledge. The game hooked me from there. I don't know if maybe they had a different team behind Act 2 or what it was, but it was leaps and bound better than Act 1. Don't get me wrong, the puzzles are still a bit more on the easy side, but having to cut off water flow to make a jet stream stronger in another area was more in-depth than, hey, you're in a big room, find something to put a soul in. There was even something resembling a boss fight at the end. Now, don't get me wrong, there were still issues with Act 3 to be sure, but it was a marked improvement over the rest of the game. The only real issue I had was I was unable to save Tony Kako... Keiko? Kako? I don't know how to pronounce his name. Because I didn't have enough souls to save him. But I'm going to chalk that up to poor soul management than the game intentionally slapping me in the face. Coming off of World 3, I had hopes the game was beginning to salvage itself, then in World 4... Oh, more giant rooms with things I need to steal a soul from in order to advance. At least the platforms were large enough to curb the whole floaty issue a bit. At this point, I became convinced World 3 had an entirely different team behind it. It was a cut above the rest of the game in both environment and puzzles to solve. If World 4 gets any better beyond the big room, I don't know. The game finally wore me down at that point. I just stopped. I really want to recommend this game. I really do. But one really good quarter of the game halfway in isn't enough to justify telling my viewers to go spend $20. But that's the thing, this game has so much going for it, I feel really hurt not enjoying it. It's unique, it's got a gorgeous design, and it's got a monster soundtrack featuring singers from my favorite bands. This should not have disappointed me. But it did. Pick up the soundtrack individually if you can, but as far as the game goes, you can comfortably stay away from it.